Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. Um, uh, Warren and I'm accompanied by Joe, uh, who would have been normally out on the Turkey Field Course in a couple of weeks. Uh, but here we are on a Monday, 23rd of July. Um, probably imminent not uh, closed down or um, what do they call it? Quarantine. We're going to. Lockdown uh, probably this week, so it's opportune. The weather's nice. We're probably in like this in Turkey, probably a bit warmer. And this is an introduction video uh, towards what we'll be doing or what you would have been doing on the lake in Turkey. As you can see, yeah, here we are on the Birmingham Worcester Canal. Uh, this is uh, Nargalu, where you would have been working. It's uh, between 20 and 26 meters deep, uh, but here at the canal, we've only got around about two meters at most. So we're going to be right. We're going to be uh, exhibiting a range of equipment that you would have used if you were out in Turkey. And uh, there'll be a series of videos, work through them one by one, and uh, it shows you how you would have got the results that we'll give you at the end. So if you work through this document, the on drop box, yeah, read through it, work through it. It's got essentially three assignments in there uh, that you'll get data for in order to work through. So I think. Uh, that's it, the end of the introduction video. Uh, there's lots of supporting documentation on the Dropbox account that you need to read. So I think we'll head over to the first video um, looking at assignment 1A, which is on the second page. So we'll be looking at uh, doing a range of uh, geochemistry readings. Uh, for this water body, but it'll be the same sort of technique that you would have done out in Turkey. And we'll be using what's called the, the Hanna meter, uh, which uh, is very good for measuring temperature, electrical conductivity, and pH. Okay, so we'll go over to the next video, video number two, using the Hanna meter. Uh, looking at the Hanna meter, it's a good piece of kit, it's waterproof, you can drop it in the water. Uh, pretend we're on the boat in the middle of Nargalu in Turkey in bright sunny Cappadocia and uh, you just switch it on this will provide you with three measurements yeah it'll provide you with temperature of the water body and it'll provide you with electrical conductivity EC measured in microsiemens and it will uh, measure pH as well so it's a question of just turning it on and uh, putting the probe in the water giving it a stir and I think that's microsiemens uh, it's coming in around about 632, something like that. Water temperature, 6.7 degrees. So you don't really want to fall in there. While it's there, you can just go into a different mode. And pH is uh, 6.34. Okay, so it's more or less just uh, midway. say it's in the middle of Cappadocia on the Lake Nar we would not have, have had uh, intercity trains buzzing past every uh, 10 minutes. Okay so that's the Hanometer, very simple to use. What you will get in your results are the results the students did last year on the field course in 2019. Okay so that's the Hanometer. Okay folks this is uh, video number three this is uh, showing you how the DO or dissolved oxygen meter works. Uh, you just turn it on, scroll through, you can get DO measured in either in milligrams per litre or as percentage. So we usually give you we usually give you both readings. Students on field courses to take both readings. It's a question of just putting the probe in, yeah, over the side of the boat, and uh, taking me a reading. The battery, we've got battery issues uh, at the moment, but uh, just a few minutes ago. The DO meter was so uh, registering 86% dissolved oxygen, yeah, and a water temperature of 8 degrees. So the temperature sensor on this instrument is giving a reading slightly higher than the reading on the Hanna meters in the previous video. If you remember that the temperature of the water on the Hanna meter was 6.7 degrees Celsius, and the reading on uh, the DO meter is is 8.6 so the difference about one degree two degrees 
think on, every apparatus uh, has different accuracy and precision. And there's lots of people passing us at the moment and uh, really self-isolating, as indeed we are. Okay, so DO, it measures the dissolved oxygen uh, in, in the water. The question you have to ask yourself is dissolved oxygen going to be higher yeah, at the surface or deeper down? And the answer is that it's going to be higher towards the surface of the water body because it's in interaction with the oxygen. And that will vary according to the time of day or the weather. If it's windy, yeah, there'll be more overturn, there'll be more dissolved oxygen getting into those upper waters. Um, we can actually measure the dissolved oxygen uh, going down at least two meters. So we can just sink the probe down, yeah, uh, to the down two meters in the canal and we can then take another meter down to two meters. But we're limited, yeah, uh, to how deep we can measure the dissolved oxygen according to the cable, according to the length of this cable. But there's a way we can actually get water from depth, yeah, to measure. Yeah, so these measurements have all been at the surface. If we wanted to measure what the dissolved oxygen, the EC, the temperature, the pH, of the water is at five meters, uh, we can use another piece of kit and this one here. We'll demonstrate that in the next vid. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay, <laughs> folks, video number four, I think. Three? Three. Whatever. Um, it's going to be labelled anyway. Uh, okay, so this is demonstrating um, how we bring water up from depth to, to undertake these, in, these, uh, these measurements. Uh, if you recall, the hanometer can only look at the water at the surface, the DO meter can only take measurements at the surface and the length of the cable of the, on the probe. This piece of kit is a beast, it's quite heavy, about 15 kilograms, and it's a water sampler. It'd be lowered down vertically, and what we do is we can open the bottom, we can open the top, Yeah, and it would go down and the water would pass straight through. When we're at the depth we want, we can activate to shut it by sending a weight down the rope. The weight contacts this plunger here. If you watch carefully, when the weight hits the plunger after having gone down the rope, it more or less shuts the, both the doors, the top door and the bottom door. The water from that depth is trapped in the sampler. We bring it to the surface and we can place it in a bucket, open the top and do our analysis. Okay, so this is what we're going to show you uh, over the next minute. So we'll open the doors again. That always happens. Yeah. We can lower it down, let's say five meters. And the canal here is only half a meter deep. Yeah, but we can actually show you how it works. Yeah. And it's brought water up from depth. Place it in a bucket. Just a question of opening the top and then sticking the probe in, measuring the DO of the water from five meters, and also then putting the hanometer in and measuring the temperature, EC and pH uh, on that water from five meters. And then once that's done, yeah, once the measurements are taken, we can let the water out and then, there's some coming, <laughs> we can send the sampler down to the next depth, such as 10 meters. We do the same, repeat, empty it, send the, message, send the sampler down to 15 meters, and then 20 meters. So on until the depth we've got. So you'll get results for the surface, five meters using this, 
10 meters, 15 meters and 20 meters using this water sample. And that's how the results uh, were obtained from water uh, from depth. That's it. Thanks. Number five. So this is demonstrating uh, the Secchi disc. Uh, so the previous readings were uh, geochemistry of the lake, uh, temperature, pH, EC, and um, dissolved oxygen from various depths on the surface going down the water column to the base of the lake at NAR. Now the, we're going to measure um, the clarity of the water, and this is the uh, Secchi disc. It's a 20 centimeter diameter disc, it's standardized across the world. It was invented by an Italian called Secchi, S-E-C-C-H-I, and it's used an awful lot in uh, lake monitoring studies because it's cheap, it's, it's non-destructive, it's easy to get these results, and it measures the clarity of the surface waters, what we might call the photic zone. And that's important because that's where all the biological life uh, happens. So the, the technique of the Segi disc is, it's on a measured cable. The Segi disc is lowered down. You can probably just see that. Can you, can you focus in on the water, uh, Joe? So the Segi disc is lowered down, yeah? And it's reached the bottom actually now of the canal, so close to the shore. And it's lowered down until uh, you can't see it, yeah? And then it's raised up until you can. So there's two measurements essentially. So it's lowered down until you just can't see it. You note the depth at which you can't see it. You send it lower down and then you raise it slowly until you can just see it. And then you take the average of those two readings. Yeah, okay, so clearly, clearly, <laughs> the clearer the water is, yeah, the, the lower the depth. The deeper the depth, the Secchi disc will go, go down, uh, and uh, the deeper the water will be that you see it. Okay, so there's many factors that can influence the clarity of a water body. So at this time of year, lake water is getting warmer. That's increasing the biological productivity. Yeah, the algae, and that can serve to cause the water to be cloudy. But think of all the other factors that can uh, can be invoked. To account for cloudy waters. So think of turbidity. Yeah? If, uh, if the lake is actively recruiting sediments from the catchment, those clays and silts can cause the water to be cloudy. Dissolve solids, yeah, and there are others. So uh, hopefully when you start to do the assignment, you can think of other factors that can be advanced or invoked to account for the, uh, the clarity of a water body. So that's the Secchi disc. And that will be assignment uh, 1B in your little workbook. So you'll get readings of the Secchi disc from the groups that undertook the field course uh, back in 2019 last year. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're nearing the end. Video number five, we think. Anyhow, uh, this is the assignment 1C. Uh, video. Um, so far, we've taken some lake uh, water measurements using the HANA, yeah, and the uh, dissolved oxygen control. Unfortunately, yeah, taking temperature is only a spot measurement. It's what the temperature of the water body is at this particular time of the day, at this particular time of the month, at this particular time of the year. Yeah? So that just tells you what the water temperature of the water body is doing uh, at that particular time. If we wanted, for example, to uh, analyze temperature um, throughout the year, yeah, from different depths, that would mean someone coming out, and for Lake Nar, that would be going out onto a boat, yeah, so blowing a boat up every day, going out there, doing the surface, five, ten, 15, 20 meters down, yeah, using that water sampler, and that is laborious. But there is, uh, thankfully, a nice bit of kit called a Tiny Tag uh, Aquatic Data Logger. Yeah, and there's, there's a big chance you might use this as part of your undergraduate dissertation work uh, coming. They can measure air temperature, 
Yeah, and if this one was activated, it'd be measuring the air temperature right now. Uh, but you can actually uh, put it on a on a rope. Yeah. So you could attach these data loggers to a, a rope. Yeah. It'd have a float on it, so that float would, would, would float on the top of the water. You could have data loggers. Yeah. At uh, five meters. Another one at ten meters. Another one at 15 meters, and another one at 20 meters, and the the line would be anchored to the the, the base of the lake. It just so happens at Lake Nar, we do have a series of these data loggers, yeah, uh, recording temperature uh, across the year, and they're activated uh, to record temperatures every 20 minutes throughout the year. And it's a question of going back on the field course bringing them out the water, unfastening them from the rope, putting them on an inductive pad onto a computer and downloading the data. So this is just demonstrating what we can do with these aquatic tiny tag data loggers. So you'll be given the data for uh, one year of temperature at Lake Nar. And that's important because the temperature of a water body uh, varies throughout the year. And the temperature governs what biological activity, what biological life, what algae can live, what diatoms can live, and what benthic organisms can live throughout the year. And you'll find that the data uh, for Lake Nar are quite interesting. The lake appears to stratify. Yeah? That means there's a, dif there's a difference in the temperature of the surface waters and the temperature of the lower waters. And that difference in temperature is a thermocline. It's, 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 there's warmer, less dense water at the top, yeah? And there's heavier, more dense, colder water at the bottom. And that's important because most of the biological life uh, will be restricted to the top five meters. The lower parts of the lake, the deeper parts of the water of the lake, uh, become what's called anoxic. And they lack oxygen, and they're colder, much colder. You'll see these data on the tiny tag data that will provide you on the droplet account for previous years. Okay, so tiny tag aquatic data loggers, you might use them for your undergraduate dissertations. Uh, have a look at the data that will give you uh, as part of assignment 1C. That's it, thanks. Okay, folks, um, that concludes sort of demonstrating the apparatus, the equipment that you would have. Um, um, had hands-on experience of using uh, if, we were to, uh, if we had gone to Turkey on the field course. So just to recap, um, there are th three assignments contained within this, uh, this workbook. It says group on the front, ignore that, it's individual submission. So each undergraduate will have these results and they need to work through this uh, workbook and um, uh, use the results from previous years. So remember assignment 1A was looking at the temperature, EC, pH and dissolved oxygen yeah, for the lake uh, using the HANA meter and the dissolved oxygen meter. Assignment, assignment 1B was looking at lake uh, water clarity uh, yeah, uh, using the Secchi disk. So again, work through those um, those results from the last year's uh, field course and 1C uh, was using uh, looking at the the temperature data that was obtained using the aquatic tiny tag data loggers across one calendar year every 20 minutes. Okay so um, I'll write this in a in a, in a, uh, in a document but uh, work through the workbook answer the questions and you will plug the results into an Excel spreadsheet that will be available on the Dropbox account. So you plug those results in and you will derive a series of charts yeah, and graphs and I'll be getting you to copy and paste those graphs into another document and the, the write-up on this workbook together with the graphs will provide the mark for my side of the field course. Clearly, Chris Bradley will be getting you to do something for his side of the field course. So there's no presentations, as we can't gather. There's no field notebook. It's just this 
workbook submission with the accompanying graphs that we'll generate in the Excel spreadsheet and Chris Bradley's side of the of the uh, assessment uh, for his geomorphology and that will that will comprise the total mark for uh, the field course. So there'll be this document on the Dropbox, there'll be the Excel spreadsheet and there'll be a mini lecture that you would have uh, received in Turkey on the importance of um, lake lakes and uh, and lake monitoring data. So look at those documents uh, when they're uploaded onto Dropbox in due course alongside the videos that Joe has kindly provided um, this morning. So you've got my email address, you can always email me for uh, quick questions but do read through all the documentation before you do email because we're still extremely busy uh, dealing with uh, lots of other admin and online coursework material. I think that is it.